Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we'll take Unit 4 from the Intermediate Workbook. The title of Unit 4 is Doing the Right Thing, in which we are going to focus on modal verbs, obligation and perm permission, word formation in terms of vocabulary, phrasal verbs, and uh, whether they are separable or inseparable. Question for one is about have to and don't have to, which is considered as one of the modal verbs. So question one, look at the photos, match the statements with the, the people. So here, as we can see, we have three people in the pictures and we have nine sentences. We are going to match each sentence with the suitable person in each picture. Question two, we are going to write the questions using the statements from exercise one. So ba based on the statements on, uh, in this exercise, we are going to uh, form the questions. Of course, the answer is given uh, to us to show us wh what uh, information must we choose from question one. Question two is about forms of have to and of course as we previously explained that have to is different from the other modal verbs in terms of forms so complete the sentences with a suitable form of have to so we are going to focus on each word in the sentence to decide what form um, uh, should the modal verb have to uh, take and here we have 10 examples Question 3 is about the modal verbs can and be allowed to that have the same uh, meaning with, or the same use which is uh, permission. Who says these sentences? Where are the people? So we are going to read the sentences and decide who says the statement and where are they exactly. Following the first example we will apply the same as the rest of the sentences part two of question three is about writing the sentences about these places use can or allowed to we are going to um, build two sentences the first one with be allowed to and the second one with with the can um, of course related to the places given here Question four, we, we will carry on talking about uh, can and be allowed to since they are related to permission. So here, look at the pictures of Tom and his father Jack and Sam, a businessman, and his boss Andy. Match the lines of the conversation with the correct person and put them in uh, the order. So, we are going to uh, focus on the pictures and then we will match the lines here down with the, the suitable person here. Question five, we will take another modal verb which is the modal verb should that is related basically to giving advice. So we will read the sentences and give advice of course using the modal verb should. Based on what we have here as a first example, we will do the same with the rest of the sentences. Part 2 of, of the question 5. Complete the questions with should and a suitable verb. Here the main verb is missing, so we will add a main, the main verb plus the modal verb should. My brother has invited me to go skiing, but I've never done it before. Should I go with him? So we will follow the same uh, structure of the first example. Question six, sorry, questions, question six is about must and have to. And we already explained the difference between must and have to. We said that they both um, express obligation, but there is a difference in terms of use and in terms of form, of course. So match the pairs of sentences with their meaning. So here we have um, a pair of sentences and down we have the meaning so we are going to match each sentence with its meaning.
And we have five examples. Question seven is also about um, uh, must and uh, have to, but here it's the um, negative form. Mustn't and don't have to. And we have to keep in mind that mustn't and don't have to, um, they, they have very or totally different meaning, not as the uh, affirmative or the positive form. So here choose the correct form. We are going to read the sentence and decide whether we need must not, mustn't, or don't have to. Question 8. It's also about talking about con uh, obligation. Complete the sentences with, with much, sorry, with must, have to, mustn't, or don't have to. So here we have like a short story based on what we have. In the pictures, we are going to finish um, the uh, slides, okay? Coming to the vocabulary part, which is question 9, it's about word formation. So as you can see here, we have uh, like uh, four boxes uh, in which there are some words missing. So here, the given word, either the noun of the verb, and we are going to finish uh, the missing word. And down here, we have the noun and adjective, and we'll do the same to finish, whether with the noun or with the adjective. Coming to the pronunciation part, it's about correcting wrong information. So here is a conversation between Miss Maddox and a bank manager, Mr. Sanders. Okay. So here, as an explanation, Miss Sanders is um, keeps making mistakes um, uh, while he's speaking to Miss uh, Maddox, and she is trying to correct uh, his mistake. Uh, by putting stress on uh, the corrected uh, information. So here we are going to read the conversation and whenever Miss Maddox corrects the mistakes, we are going to highlight or underline the corrected um, information. Coming to the last part of Unit uh, 4, it's about phrasal verbs. Uh, of course, we already know uh, the definition of a phrasal verb. And um, as we said earlier, phrasal verbs, they might be separable, means we can separate between the verb and the particle, or inseparable, it means that we can't uh, separate between uh, the verb and the particle. Here's, here is like a um, grammar review about phrasal verbs. After we read the uh, grammar review, we are going to answer the question by completing uh, with the word it in the correct place. So. If the phrasal verb is separable, put it between the verb and the particle. If it's not separable, so of course we have to keep it as it is. And here we have 10 examples. This is the end of unit 4 uh, workbook. Later on we'll have the answer key for each question. Thank you so much.